Welcome to Tech Notice, my friends. This over here is the Threadripper PC build. It's got a very powerful CPU, 128 gigabytes of core channel memory, RTX 3070. But if you are thinking about building this same PC for yourself for video editing, then you're probably wondering how good is the Premiere Pro live playback performance? And that is exactly what we're gonna do in this video, right after this. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 10 OEM license, then look no further. BobKeys.com is a website where you can purchase all sorts of keys and licenses for very affordable prices. With a tech notice discount, you'll be able to get the Windows 10 Pro license 25% off. To purchase the license, click on the link in the description or search for Windows 10 license on BobKeys.com. Then add the product to the cart and press proceed checkout. Remember to add the 25 5% discount code and complete the order. Once you have the license key, click here, here, paste in the license and you're all done. Check out popkeys.com in the description below. Now we're gonna be going through quite a few different codecs from like 4K to all the way 12K. But if you wanna know a specific codec that you're interested in, check out the chapters below if you wanna just skip to that part or come back to that type of codec. So let's start. First of all, we're gonna be using Adobe Premiere Pro version 15.2. So it's a build 35, just so you know, we're gonna be using that version of Premiere Pro. We're gonna start with uh, 4K and different codecs that are accelerated by GPU and without GPU acceleration. If you don't know like what that means or which codecs are accelerated, I recommend you check out this video. You can find it in the corner over there where I'm gonna cover all of that in Premiere Pro. But we're gonna be starting with 8-bit 420, which is basically like a normal mirrorless camera 4K footage that you would get from like any of your Sony cameras or, you know, Fuji cameras, Canon cameras. You'd have an 8-bit 420 codec, which is a very basic codec. So let's start. First of all, one thing to notice if you're not familiar with Premiere Pro is that my playback speed or playback resolution is full and there is a little indicator over here as well this uh, green little dot and that will show you how many frames are dropped if it's green it's zero if it drops any frames then it's yellow or if it completely can't play back anything it's going to be red but most likely you're going to be seeing a uh, yellow and uh, green in this option over here so i've got a task manager open as well so i can easily show you like the a usage or some of the uh, CPU memory and um, GPU. So if you're thinking about maybe I can, you know, skip out on these parts a little bit or get a different part of this PC. By the way, if you do want to check out all the PC parts that I've used in this build, then I'm going to leave everything in the description below. If you want to build exactly the same PC, feel free to check that out. Also, there's quite a few other videos about this. So if you do want to get yourself, you know, more acquainted with the Threadripper build over here, best bang for buck Threadripper build, then feel free to check them out. But it's helpful for you to see the task manager over here to see different codecs and how they relate to the hardware and what hardware they use. So first of all, this I'm going to just try the playback head over here this is a uh, 8 bit 420 60 frames per second it's a little bit of a slow motion but as you can see the timeline performance is very 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 good i have no problem with that and if we look at the task uh, manager over here you can see that the gpu has been utilized the cpu hasn't is not doing much but the C gpu is doing most of the work so if i'm gonna press play as well you'll see that it drops a zero frames when playing back this footage so as you can see, it plays back no problem. Uh, zero frames dropped when playing it back. But if I do want to press play and, you know, if you're using JKL editing and you want to play back double the speed. So right now it's playing this 60 frames per second, double the speed. It is dropping actually frames, even though you might not see it with your eye, it is dropping frames. But in terms of timeline performance, if you use any of the mirrorless camera footage or H.264, 8-bit, 420, it's going to be fine. Next, we're gonna move on the bit depth of the video and we have 10 bit 420, 24 frames per second. And even though this uh, color is 10 bit, the timeline performance is still very, very good. Sorry, this is half the resolution. Let's put it full. So it will be actually equal to the previous one. In terms of the timeline performance, that's gonna press play. And then we're gonna see that as well. Zero frames dropped. Once we have pressed play, as you can see, our GPU is decoding the footage over here and the GPU is accelerating. This is hardware accelerated footage. Now, the same thing if I'm going to press like double the speed over here, then we're going to start dropping some frames. But it looks like these are constant 
drop frames so it dropped them in the beginning and then now plays it back actually normally without any frames dropped which is interesting again 4 to 0 is hardware accelerated so if you're cheap if you've got a beefy gpu you've got no problem editing that now let's have a look at 422 so this comes from the sony a7s 3 and this is 10 bit 422 24 frames per second and this is something that isn't hardware accelerated so now when we look at it over here as you can see our cpu is the one that does the uh, encoding of this footage gpu decoding it's nothing over here as you can see but this is interesting it still plays it back zero frames dropped looks like it's got no problems doing that if you just jump over the timeline still very nice performance very nice even like if you scrub the playhead just the cpu is so powerful it just literally smashes through this so if you look at the cpu usage look it's 100 percent usage used over there and it just smashes through this edit so this is probably the best c pc i have used for 422 10 bit timeline performance it's very very good now just add a little bit more frames this is now at 60 frames per second same timeline it's a little bit more choppier than 24 frames because obviously there's more things to play back on the timeline but still very very good considering this is a 422 which isn't hardware accelerated and purely goes on cpu so this over here is um hastus 265 codec but this is 420 as well so it is hardware accelerated but this is h265 now and looking at the timeline performance i think it's it's pretty okay like it's not as smooth as something from like a red um or b raw which are very very smooth very smooth codecs to play back because they're just very easy these are very very compressed codecs so even though they're gpu accelerated they still play back quite well so i can press play double the speed i can completely edit it even though it says i'm dropping some frames over here i could easily edit this no problem for me so h264 and h265 codecs for like the most common mirrorless cameras edits easy very very good timeline performance now the interesting thing is uh, red 4k so let's have a look at this timeline performance now this is a little bit of a different codec the way uh, the video has been put together a very much less like compressed codec and if i'm going to press play the full resolution plays back zero frames dropped and looks like it's got no problem doing that easy double the speed still easy as you can see zero frames dropped i'm playing it back double the speed red raw 4k if you're planning to do that no problem now look how smooth the timeline performance is when going through with these clips over here like as as fast as i'm moving the timeline that's how fast the it moves over there on the on the screen it's just incredible performance of this and um, now as you can see the gpu is used but it's more like the gpu memory is used and the 3d is used video decoding isn't coming from the uh, gpu it is done on the gpu but our gpu has plenty of power to make this editing very very smooth boring let's move on to 5k red raw 5k full resolution playback over here very very smooth i've got no problem over there i'm just going to press play because we're just going to look how it's going to play back plays back zero frames drop at the moment we can see that our cpu is a little bit used through that gpu is used as the dedicated memory so the memory um, is used and as you can see we dropped a zero frame so if you plan to do 4k or 5k red raw uh, footage then you shouldn't have any problems 6k a bit higher resolution so looking at red raw over here okay we've got some kind of a interesting thing going on on the screen over there i'm not sure if you can see that on the computer as well so looking at the timeline performance very very good no problems over here like as as fast as i'm moving the timeline over here that's how fast it is actually playing back and if i'm going to press play at full resolution 6k it plays back a zero frames dropped now we can see over here as well dedicated memory is quite a bit used but the cpu is doing the decoding of the footage 
we dropped zero frames so if you plan to do 6k editing on this this machine is overkill b row 6k as well so as we can see the timeline performance of this the 6k clips is absolutely easy these are two 6k's on top of each other now two b row 6k's on top of each other and plays back no problem three 6k footage on top of each other plays back at all problem so let's have a look we're playing this back and that is no problem i'm just going to move on to this two b-raw 6k clips on top of each other 24 frames per second and no problem three clips on top of each other and we're still playing back zero frames dropped at full resolution that's very 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 good so even if you use b-raw 6k you shouldn't have any problems playing back at this footage. Let's move on to 8K. So now this is red 8K. Let's have a look at the timeline performance. As you can see, okay, we've got a bit of a, okay. Let's have a look at this now. Now this is very, very smooth to be honest. Like, <laughs> look at the playback of this. I don't know why it's like going flickering, but this is insane. Like, it plays back as smooth as the 4K, I would say. Maybe a slight difference. This is so, so smooth. Full resolution 8K, as you can see. You can see 8K clips we're playing back. It's not a proxy. This is insane. So when we press play over here as well, full resolution 8K. We're playing back full resolution 8K. Let's see how well it does it use. As you can see, the dedicated memory is probably a little bit of a bottleneck over here. We're using very, very close to eight gigabytes of our dedicated VRAM, but we are dropping zero frames over there. As you can see, most of the stuff gets done on the CPU. We have 24 gigabytes used of RAM. And there we go, 8K red raw. We're dropping zero frames it's it's quite a beast and as you can see like our cpu wasn't even utilized 100 percent our memory wasn't utilized 100 percent this is this is crazy absolutely crazy so now this over here is now a bit of a nutcracker this is canon r5 8k if you know what codec this is this is incredibly incredibly hard to edit much harder than red raw so let's have a look at the timeline performance full resolution it is very very choppy over here but to be honest, not that bad. Like very similar to the 422 uh, playback of the 4K we tried earlier on. Let's have a look at this. As you can see, our memory now was 50 gigs used, our CPU was used, our GPU was quite all right. So let's press play over here and then see what happens. Can it even play back of this footage? Full resolution It's just going to do some weird choppy choppy stuff but it tries to play it back. As you can see, now our CPU is maxed out. Everything is over there. Our memory is 68 gigabytes of RAM used. Let's see if it's gonna keep climbing or is that how much it's gonna use? To be honest, it's playing back mm, all right, but still quite a bit of frames are dropping, but let's say no one would edit this at full resolution and that half resolution the playback is very very nice at least the scrubbing through the timeline if we press play on half resolution it manages to do it okay we're dropping zero frames let's see if it keeps dropping any flame frames so as you can see if we are playing back uh, the canon r5 8k raw footage then looks like we're not dropping any frames uh, but you need quite a beefy computer to do that. We have 64 gigabytes in use and that is Just constantly staying there. It peaks even above that GPU memory is about, you know, three four gigabytes used And then our CPU is doing most of this work over here now Boom, this is done now and we dropped zero frames when we're using half resolution if you use quarter of resolution the playback is so smooth on the timeline as like fast as i can move the cursor that's how fast it moves now if you do want to do 8k editing on this canon r5 or red raw 8k i think it can do it now if you do plan to do this on this route 
I'd recommend getting a little bit of a beefier GPU because of the VRAM. So whether you go for 3080, 3080 Ti or 3090 that have a little bit more VRAM, which helps you to play back this high resolution footage, just because the resolution is bigger and the GPU starts to be maybe a little bit bottlenecked over there. And last of all, we're gonna try this absolute killer timeline of 12K footage. This is B-RAW 12K, look at that. There is 12,288 pixels in horizontal line. So let's have a look at the timeline performance of this over here. Very, very, very smooth. Okay, this is half the resolution. Let's put it full resolution, see what it's like then. Like full resolution, it plays it back. I mean, I'd say it's smoother than the 4K422 uh, from Sony's A7S III because it's not hardware accelerated, but let's have a look. Okay, that's how you use RAM. There was over 80 gigabytes used, the GPU was used over here, but the memory was used, not the video decoder was used. Okay, so this is quite like taxing in terms of hardware wise this codec, but let's put it at like half the resolution because like there's no 12k monitors on you know in the world. We're gonna press play and then let's see how well does it do in playing back this footage. Okay, let's go back to home. Let's press play again. Okay, it starts playing. It drops a little one frame one frame okay that's crazy okay at half resolution we dropped one frame which is insane ridiculous ridiculous power of this pc so even the 12k is completely editable on this even at half resolution you're gonna get super smooth timeline performance and if you want to go to quarter of a resolution it's like no problem at all as fast as you can move the mouse that's how fast the timeline a play head and moves with your footage. Now, what I'm also curious about is this little project I created over here. Now, this also has a little bit of a color grading on. Please mind uh, the uh, color grading because it's just done randomly very, very quickly just to add a little bit of color grade on so we can check like how would the timeline performance work when there is actually color grade on top as well. So this is red 4K, no problem. This is uh, B-RAW 6K and no problem here. 422 10-bit, no problem. HS 10-bit 422, no problem. 12K, look at that. 12K with a color grade at full resolution. Oh my word, it's smoother than almost without the color grade. That's insane. We have Canon R5 over here. That's a little bit choppy over there, but still completely doable. This is red 8K and 6k and 4k that is insane <laughs> very 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 impressive timeline performance so hopefully guys this showed you how good this pc is when playing back footage on premiere pro live test now this is recorded on a separate computer so there's no like actual hardware used inside this computer to record the screen it's done separately so this is pure performance coming through so this is what you can expect when you build this pc and you know start editing with this at home so my friends if you want to know how to build this or how good the benchmarks are some of the other benchmarks like we're going to do puget uh, bench from uh, lightroom photoshop after effects premiere and all that sort of things then stay tuned we're going to look at all that as well as rendering performance uh, thermals everything check out some other videos coming soon without no further ado thanks for watching if you like the video you know what to do subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye